All right, what is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be concluding the PA Nats series. Um, we did about six episodes before I unfortunately had a small back injury, um, kind of derailed my training, um, did not have me motivated to record much. So I didn't record those last couple of weeks and I didn't take my camera to the meet because, again, I just really wanted to focus on the meet. Um, I, I was already battling through something and I didn't want extra stimulus and extra things to worry about. So, Instead, we're going to be recapping the meet, watching the meet together. I'm going to kind of just be talking on through it, what my thoughts were, what we were thinking with certain attempts, and then also let y'all know kind of what my thoughts are after the meet. We're about, I think, 11 or 12 days out after I competed. Um, so yeah, just kind of let y'all know my thoughts, what I'm thinking, and the plans going forward. So we'll go ahead and start here with the opener. Before that, the weight cut went great. Um, very precise. Kedrick's always on point with the weight cut. Everything was dialed in. I feel like I recomped perfectly. I felt strong, as strong as I could on the day with the circumstances. Um, so weight cut was great. Sleep was decent. Everything around the meet in terms of me getting to the meet, besides obviously the low back injury, was good, right? So again, no excuses. This is the performance I put up. This is what I had on the day. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start with the opener. 302 kilos on the bar. This is a weight maybe a little bit down from what the opener would be if I was 100% healthy, um, but not that far off, right? This is a decent weight, but we know I could hit it any day of the week. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and watch the opener. Michael Davis. 302 and a half, again, a weight I could hit any day of the week. I feel like you could tell in the video, I'm looking a lot leaner than I have in past meets. Um, I actually weighed in for this meet at like, watch the video nice squat beautiful opener perfect speed i feel like position i feel like control was really good that's something i've really been working on lately um but like i said i weighed in the way it doesn't matter my weight cut started at around 236 to 237 pounds that's the lightest i've cut from since maybe like 2020 ish i think um my best meat ever i cut from 238 right so not far off um, I don't think weight played a, a factor. Some people have mentioned maybe I should be heavier coming into the meets, cut a little bit more. And I don't have a problem with being a couple pounds heavier. Um, but I don't think one or two pounds, especially after four years of training and recomping and being more muscular, made a difference in my top and strength much. Because, um, again, I'm very close to when I hit my all-time best total back in 2021. I'm only like one or two pounds. I think about one pound off of that, right? I think 237 was kind of my training weight right there at the end. So, all right, so we'll go ahead and go here to the second attempt. We ended up taking a um, pretty normal jump, 15 kilos. Now, I think because I was in contention to win the meet, and that's contention's a, a big word. I, I wasn't really close to Ash, right? If Ash is at his best, I'm at my best. At this point in time, Ash is going to win, right? But we were trying to keep myself within striking distance. Maybe I can make up some ground on the bench. Um, so we were trying to take normal jumps that I would take if I was 100% healthy, right? So we jumped to this 317. This is a pretty normal second attempt and sets me up um, to hit my all-time best on my third. Moves great. I mean, based off the speed, you would think like, hey, he might have another 10 keys. Based off the control, based off the speed, based on how it moved. And that's what Joey thought right when I walked off. Um, he was thinking 10 to 12. Me personally, because I felt my back, I felt the weakness in the middle of the, where I have my sticking point, which is the middle of the squat, I felt the weakness there. So Joey's thinking 10 or 12, everyone's thinking 10 or 12, I immediately say seven, right? Um, again, that's just me knowing my body, being in tune with my body, um, and knowing like, hey, I don't think I have 10 on the day, because I could just feel... It's weird because when you watch it on video, it looks it looks great. It looks like, hey, he's strong today. Um, he might have something nice. But we'll see. I'll show y'all. So we end up only loading up 325, which to me is, in my head, is already kind of a failure, right? Because I'm not even hitting my best. And I might, maybe I'm being a little bit hard on myself. But even if I would hit this 325, which I just spoiled it, even if I hit this 325, I'm just not really happy about it, right? So... All right, so here we are on the third attempt, 325 kilos, something I've hit in meets at least four or five times, I think. I think I've hit 727 three times. It's so like four times I've hit more than this weight, maybe five times. Um, so in my head, I was like, okay, it might be hard, but it's going to be, I'm going to hit it. And so you can see that sticking point, right? That sticking point is what I was talking about. I felt that on the second attempt. It was just like an, an unstableness and a weakness right there in the middle. 
obviously some of that's probably from training, right? My training probably just was not sufficient to hit the big weights that I wanted to hit on the day. And then you see, I take those two steps back. So obviously I was strong enough for it, but you saw with the shakes, um, it was just a little bit too much for me to overcome and maintain my stability and not take that step back, right? If I don't take that step back, I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna fall backwards, right? So I had to take that step back. Fun fact, that's actually the first raw squat that I have missed ever in competition, right? I used to compete equipped. It's much more common to miss lifts equipped. But once I started competing raw in 2016, I believe, or 2017, um, I've never missed a raw squat, not one, until that, right? I think it was 44 attempts straight of squat, never missed. Um, so yeah, you can just imagine like what's going through my head when I get to the back. Super frustrated. In my head, it's like, all right, you're already out for first place, right? Ash is too good to miss a lift. Like the ideal day is I go nine for nine and maybe Ash misses one or two. And that's no shade. Shout out my boy. I love Ash. Um, but that's like really my only path to victory, right? He has to miss a lift and I have to make all my lifts. Um, so right there, I'm very, I go to the back. I'm, I'm super dejected at this point. Joey, Chris are trying to like hype me up a little bit, tell me, keep my head in it. And I don't think I have a problem keeping my head in it. Like I'm always going to compete. I'm always going to try to put up my best numbers, even if like something goes shitty like this. But just in terms of like winning the meet, it's like, okay, that's kind of out the window at this point right now. I'm just competing for myself to try to beat my old total um, and to put up some big numbers. So go ahead and fast forward to bench. All right. So now we got that first opener bench. So bench, unlike the other two, this is the best bench prep I've ever had. And a lot of times, sometimes people have great preps and this happened to me with me personally. You have a great prep and then the, meet, the, the lift doesn't show up on the day or you have a shitty prep and then the lift does show up on the day. No, I had a great prep and bench showed up on the day, right? You can see from this opener, everything's locked in. My technique's locked in. I used to have an issue with my heels coming up. Um, you can see my heels are down. Like I fixed every little detail with my bench to where I'm not going to have to wait for a start command. Nothing like that's going to throw me off on the day. And I also had the privilege to compete or to train at Elysian, right? And Elysian has two Elyco combo racks, right? So I can train on this bench super comfortable, dialed in. I know exactly what my rack height is. Nothing's going to change um, from when I train to when I get to the meet. So I was super confident coming into bench even after that, that failed third squat. So we took the planned jump, which I believe was what, 12 kilos to 225. This is already an all-time, not an all-time PR, but a meet PR, right? My best beat for this was 222 and a half. Um, so I'm like, I'm dialing in right here because I'm like, okay, this is already huge weight, right? Four reds, my first four reds in comp, my first, obviously 496. And let's see how it moves. Again, that shit's moving. And I know in my head, I'm like, all right, 507, when I walk off here, I'm like, okay, 507 is 100% there. Um, Joey wanted to go five, what is it? 512, I believe is the next the next number up in kilos will be 232 and a half. Um, but in my head, I already missed a squat. I do not want to risk missing this third bench at all, right? I want to be 100% sure that I'm going to hit it. Um, so I just kind of made that. I just told him like, let's go with the lower number. Let's just jump five. Let me hit this all-time PR. Um, didn't want to get greedy, right? I feel like a, an issue or a problem that a lot of people have is they get greedy. They really want the PRs or they really want specific numbers now when it's like, and you're, those numbers are going to come if you keep training and keep being smart. Um, and in my head, that's what it was. It's like, I'm always going to be able to come back and hit 232, 235. Let me secure this seven and a half kilo meat PR because that's a that's a fat bench PR um, and just build momentum going into deadlift, right? So that was kind of my mindset. All right, so now we got the third attempt. You see the tricep, you see the tricep poking. Um, I'm not even nervous coming out here. Like I know this is all time PR, but I've obviously already hit this in the gym. I, knew, I mean, I know it's a meat PR, but I've obviously already hit this in the gym. Flies off the chest, super clean lockout. It looks obvious that I had another two and a half. Um, you never know what happens with those big weights, right? You get a bigger weight on the bar. Maybe your sink messes up a little bit. Maybe you, you mess up the descent. Um, so just because I groove that perfectly and it moved like that, you never really know when you add another two and a half. Um, but based off the speed, I think I had another two and a half. And I think if my bench, bench training keeps going how it's been going, um, I'm suspecting another nice bench PR come to this next meet. So, so now on to deads. We're having an okay day so far, right? Obviously, squat was like, what, 12 kilos under my best squat. So like that's already putting me in a hole to try to hit this all-time uh like this meat pr total 
um, which is really my first goal coming into this meet. It wasn't to win, even though that was a goal of mine, and I do want to win, obviously. Um, I'm competitive. I want to be the best. That's like an obvious thing. But for me, I really wanted to PR my total. Um, for y'all that have been following the channel, y'all know it's been a long time since I PR'd my total. Back in 2021, Warcat was when I hit my best total, which was 915 kilos. Um, so coming into this meet, that was like on my mind, right? I just want to PR my total. And then whatever happens after that, obviously I want to win. But whatever happens after that, I'm cool with if I do what I believe I'm capable of doing on the day, right? So that was kind of my mindset. So we'll move into deads. For me, my deadlift opener is not a good indication of what I have on the day because it's going to move fast no matter what. And it's going to look super easy no matter what. Right. Because I'm like enough fatigue is gone for me to move a lightweight fast. And this is like a pretty lightweight for me. Um, and as you can see, if you watch that, you might think like, hey, he has another 40 kilos in him. Um, OK, maybe not 40, but maybe like another 30 kilos in him. Um, but again, with me, my speed is not a good indicator of what I have left in the tank. So Joey decided, or we both decided to jump, I believe 20 kilos. Let's see what I put on the bar. Yeah, so I jumped 20 kilos. In hindsight, I think this was too aggressive and this is something we're gonna change going forward, right? We keep expecting my deadlift to taper big into the meat and for me to have something nice on the day. Like, oh, you're just gonna taper and you're gonna be able to hit more than you hit in the gym. But when we look at the data for like the last five meets, that has not been the case, right? Whatever I hit in the gym, like that last heavy pull is pretty much what I hit in the meat. Um, so making this jump, this is what I hit in the gym. And I think it was just a little bit too aggressive, right? We're not, we have to adjust that. We can't keep expecting a big number and just hoping a big number is going to be there. And then making this second, this jump to the second, and then I'm not setting myself up for anything on the third, right? I'm like, let's go ahead and watch the lift first. And I'll talk a little bit more after. Set the hook grip, which has been feeling comfortable, but you'll see on this one, it kind of gives a little bit on that left hand. Um, I definitely over wedge my hips, which is, which is a bad habit of mine. So that's another thing I'm going to try to fix going forward. But like I was saying, your second attempt is supposed to set you up for your third attempt, right? I I've had lifters and I've had people tell me like, Oh, I just want to secure this on my second. And then depending on how it moves, we'll just put whatever on the bar, even if we only jump five or whatever, cause they want to secure like a specific number on their second. Um, but the issue with that is that. In my mind, you only have so many big lifts and so many lifts, so many lifts that are close to max effort in the tank, right? I've already hit a squat. I've already hit a bench. And now I've already hit a deadlift that's very close to max effort, right? You saw the lockout. It looked hard. How many more of those am I going to have, right? I have to set myself up for my third attempt. When you're too aggressive on your second, you think like, oh, I'm securing the kilos on my second. So if I miss my third, it doesn't matter. But really, you're leaving kilos on the on the table, right? Because if I would have took like 352 or 355 and made it move easier, then I have more gas and I can maybe chip that 360 to 362, 365. And I have a way better chance of hitting it than hitting 360 on my second and then trying to go up five or seven or whatever. When I'm already gassed, I'm already cooked because of how it's moving. So um that's kind of my mindset on second attempts is like you have to justify the weight you're going to put on the third, but also you have to pick a smart attempt in order to set yourself up for the third attempt. And I think we've just been too aggressive expecting my deadlift to taper. And it's just history shows us that it's not tapering how we think it's going to taper. So it's like, OK, now we have to make an adjustment. We have to change that. We got to be a little bit more um, less aggressive, especially when I'm coming into me with an injury. Right. And I can say all this easily in hindsight, because when I'm coming into me, I, again, I want to win. I want to PR my total. Right. So that's kind of what we're basing these things off of. But I think going forward, we got to start basing it off of like, hey, this is what the training shows us. And this is what you have like. And if that's not going to be a PR or if it's barely going to match your PR, then that's what it is. That's what it is on the day. Um, and that's still going to be the best way to to make attempts and to build my total to the biggest it could be on the day. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, let's go to the last attempt. All right, so now we got 367 and a half on the bar. Let's go ahead and play it. This would be um, a meat PR, right? A two and a half kilo meat PR. My best is 365. Again, this was back in 2021 when I competed at Warcat when I was very, very strong that day. Um, 365 was actually my second attempt. Um, so we got 367 and a half on the bar. And I just don't, I don't have the gas for it. You see, I get to lock out. 
some people might say that's a grip thing. I do not think that's a grip thing. I think that is uh, I'm literally just not strong enough and I'm holding in a spot too long. Eventually, my hook is going to give out, right? Um, because I'm trying that hard. But shout out my boy Ash. He was dapping me up after every attempt. So, yeah, that's how the meet went. Um, unfortunately, did not PR my total, which losing sucks, obviously, right? I fucking hate coming in second because I came in second so many times. Um, I came in second to Rondell at Junior Worlds. I came in second to Emil. I came in second at multiple Nats at this point, right? This Nats. I just came in second a lot of times. So, like, that part sucks for sure. But with the expectations of what I had on the day, I already knew it was a very, very, very slim chance I was actually going to win, right? Because I didn't have the best prep. I was coming in a little bit banged up. And I know how good Ash is. And I know how strong he is, even when maybe he's banged up or he's not at his best. I just know how good he is, right? So I know I can't bring anything less than my absolute best if I even want to have a shot with like some of these guys that are at the top. So that part sucks a little bit. But more than anything, it's like me not PR PRing my total is just like you put so much work into one thing and people... Obviously, everyone in my family, all my friends, they know like my, my life revolves around this because it affects them as much as it affects me, right? Like it affects like me going out. It affects me drinking. It affects me like eating out with my family. It affects, it just affects so many things that like, and I put so much effort into it. And for me to not PR my total after X amount of years, it's just like, and this is just me being like, not want, I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me. Like I'm just fucking lifting weights. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but to me personally, it's a big deal because it's like, like I said, I put so much into it. Um, and I try my best to leave like no stone unturned in terms of like preparation. Um, and I'm not saying I'm the best or I'm perfect at like my food, um, my sleep. I'm not perfect at anything, but I try to be really good at it. Right. Like I really try to sleep, especially when I'm in prep eight hours every single night. Um, I, I hit my protein every single day religiously. I've been doing that for years and years and years and years. All the little things, right? I'm checking all the boxes. Um, if you watch my training, people will always comment on my training like, well, man, that looks so easy. Or like, man, you're smoking everything. Like, you never struggle, whatever. And that's like, that's by design, right? Like, I don't overshoot my RP rarely. I do, I do sometimes for sure, right? Like, I hit 507 in the gym. Was I going to hit another rep? Who knows? But based off bar speed, it's like I don't overshoot my RP or I try to do a really good job of that. Um, I revolve my day around my training. I just do so many little things that it gets very frustrating when I get to the meet and it's like, okay, we're still not getting this result that you're putting in all this all this effort for, right? So obviously bench, I did get the result. Shout out bench, keeping me sane, keeping my mind right because without that, I would just be like, it would just be a complete failure of a meet in my mind. Um, but bench, at least we hit a seven and a half kilo meat PR after training for 12, 13 years, whatever I've been training, a seven and a half kilo meat PR is a huge PR, right? So super happy with bench. Um, but obviously the other two lifts, we got a lot of work to do. So real quick, before I end this video, I just want to talk to y'all about what my plans are or what my plans are with Joey going forward, right? So we are going to go back to two time squat. Um, I don't think I was getting enough squat stimulus in order to, yeah, I was decently strong before I got injured. I hit a 700 very clean, but I don't know if I was back at all time strength or if I was going to have the ability to PR, right? And ultimately that's the goal, right? I want to get better. I want to beat my old best numbers. Um, and if I have to squat two times to do that, then we're going to squat two times to do that. Um, we're obviously going to do it smart. It's going to be very light. It's going to be high bar, um, just some ways to implement more squats. So that's the first thing we're doing bench. We're going to continue to do the same exact thing we've been doing. I don't want to change anything. We are going down to three days for one block just to kind of give my rotator cuff back here around my scap has been, has been bugging me a little bit. So we are going to go down to three times bench for a block. Hopefully that's all it takes, right? Hopefully one block and it's good to go. And I can jump back into four times bench and I can start pushing my bench and hopefully hit another PR there. Um, so bench pretty much the same thing. And then deadlift. This is one deadlift. Squat's frustrating, but I know a lot of that is because of the injuries and because of my back. 
and because we needed to adjust the one time. So I'm not as mad about squat, even though it's frustrating because it's been like so long since it's progressed. Deadlift, I've hit 800 pound competition standard deadlifts in the gym at least. I went back and counted because that's how fucking frustrated I was. And I really just wanted to see what the number was. I've hit like a comp standard 800 plus deadlift like 10 times. I've hit 800 like like with any standards in terms of like a pound plates, maybe a text power bar, different bars, stuff like that. Straps like 20 times or like 15 to 20 times or something like that. I've only hit an 800 deadlift in competition one time. Um, that's an issue, right? Because if this is one of my strongest lifts sporadically, sporadically in, in training, this will just be my strongest lift, right? 820, 830 deadlifts, 850 deadlift. Like I've hit all these numbers in the gym and when we get to the comp it's not showing up then th there's an issue there right we got to figure something out in order to get my strongest self to show up when it's supposed to show up um i think maybe the formula for me is a little bit different than other people i don't know if once i start getting too beat it's like my delf is just not going to show up it is very like dependent on fatigue I don't, I have a decent build for deadlift, but I don't have the best build for deadlift. So again, if I start getting too cooked, I start uh, beating myself up too much. It's like, it doesn't show up at the end of prep. And then the taper doesn't seem to like make it show up on meat day, right? Like some people be like, oh, you're cooked. It's not showing up, but you just need to drop some fatigue and it'll show up meat day. But that's not the case. It's not happening. Um, so one thing we are implementing is I am going to be doing my primary deadlift after my high bar squats, right? And that's something I've never done. I always come into deadlifts very fresh, usually after two days of rest. Um, and so maybe we're getting like a false sense of how strong I am because I, I have I have like no fatigue or minimal fatigue because I'm resting two days. And then I'm getting to the meet. And again, like I said, I'm not hitting 800. I'm not super. There's no super compensation for deadlift. Um, so we're going to start training more like it's going to be in a meet, right? So if I'm getting fatigued, because one of the issues is I feel like I just fatigued throughout the meet. Some of it's from the squats. A lot of it's from the squat. Y'all saw that third squat. Um, and my back was really tired by the time I got to that third deadlift. And so we're going to squat before I deadlift in training, hopefully to simulate more like a meet day, how I'm going to be feeling when I deadlift. And then hopefully we can progress deadlift that way. Continue to progress. I feel like deadlift progress is fine. But progress deadlift that way, and then we have a more realistic expectation of like, okay, if you hit 800 already fatigued in the gym, you just squatted before, then maybe we will get some super compensation, and on the day, I actually will have something better um, than what I had in the gym, or at least the same thing, right? Which most of the time, I hit the same thing, but it's very hard, um, harder than it was in the gym. So those are the plans. Um, I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to stay... Mode. I'm I'm always motivated, but I'm trying to stay positive and like tell myself like, hey, that that PR toe is gonna come, at, and it's gonna be like it's a fucking three year drought, right? I don't know. A lot of people that do something for three years and don't get better at it might fucking just call it like, hey, I'm not getting better. It's been three years. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep working. Um, we're gonna keep trying to be smarter, keep tweaking things. Keep tweaking the programming. Um, try to be even more dialed on my nutrition, even more dialed on my sleep, even more dialed on all the things surrounding training um, so that when I come back to this meet in July, Raleigh SPD meet, um, I'm ready to hit a PR total. Hopefully win a little bit of cash, but really that's secondary, right? The cash, the wins, the, the first place, all that shit's secondary. I need to PR my total. So um, that's the plan going forward. That's all I got for this video. Appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate support. Like, comment, subscribe. I got the one hun code. I got the SBD link down below. If you want some one hun shoes, that's what I was wearing at this comp. Um, great shoes. My feet don't slip on bench. Super stable on squat. Um, if you want some one hun shoes, link down below. Code Mikey. Save you 10%, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for y'all. See y'all on the next one. I'm out.